So after Lascano's massive result yesterday, getting second in Dwarsdorf Flandern, thought I'd make a video about who is he. So he's been professional for five years. He signed with Cajarao straight away. This is Volta Portugal uh, 2020. Um, he was really, really strong in this race. And everyone knows this race is absolutely nuclear level. Um, then in 2022, he signed for Movistar. He's been at them ever since. 23 years old, so pretty young. But, and he's like a classics rider. Uh, so 78 kilos-ish, he says on, on Strava, 1 meet 89. He was in the early break in um, in Volta, Portugal. Doesn't seem like mad descender, but nonetheless, the boy launched it solo, 31k to go, and held off like a decent chasing ground like Willy Schmidt was there, along with some other Burgos boys. So pretty strong all round from this man. And I think it goes to show that like he shouldn't, shouldn't really be considered too under the radar. He's had really good results for quite a long time, to be honest. And I think last year, some of his best results, like 29th in the individual TT champs, the world champs, doesn't sound unreal, but like he probably didn't have the best setup and still coming 29th is pretty un outrageous. Um, he also won a stage in Tour de Wallonie, which we're going to show. Second in the Spanish national TT champs, again, very strong. The rest of it kind of no standout results, like a couple top four, 40s, top 50s um, in like either Grand Tour uh, TTs or one day races. So he's definitely stepped up a lot. But, you know, he has done well in the in the past, uh, sort of like Tour of Luxembourg, 15th overall, 10, top 10 as well. So he's been there or thereabouts, maybe just hasn't had necessarily the one standout result, um, except these two wins, which he has. So this is his first one, which is Volta Portugal a couple of years ago when he was riding for Caja Rao. However, after that, um, Mother Star, obviously, he was t taking more in a domestique role. But I think what he showed yesterday, despite being in the break the whole time, is that he's really, really strong. I'm going to go through that power file after um, two of the videos. You can see the chasing bunch is pretty, like, mildly organized. I'd say it wasn't the most organized thing in the world. Um, but anyway, pretty strong performance from the man. Also on a DeRosa bike, cannot be helping you. Anyway, a big celebration. Takes his first professional win, which is always big. This is uh, Waloni. It's just some highlights, um, which I managed to find. Um, anyway, he got in the early break again with like campanuts and stuff. Um, there's not much footage of this. They only filmed stage four and stage five, which is kind of rogue. But you can see like coming through uh, the break. Here he is, um, last corner with campanuts. I'm pretty sure. Uh, and then everyone else is chasing him behind. And then the next time you'll see him, he's just on his own. So being Campanats in like a bunch uh, in a breakaway obviously goes to show that you are pretty strong. Um, and again, I think I think we showed that yesterday. 400 normalized um, for four and a half hours is really, really strong. So yeah, that's his second pro win. Anyway, we're now going to get onto his Strava ride from yesterday because it's pretty special. Uh, and I think it's interesting to see what this man can do. Right, so you may have seen my tweet about this, but I thought is might as well just do a video on it because uh, his numbers are absolutely ridiculous. So this was uh, Dwarsdorf of Flandre and yesterday. Last kind of came second, kind of surprised. People don't know who he is. Um, so anyway, 396 normalized for four hours is outrageously strong. Now you can see early doors, he's obviously trying to get in a break. This is like the first bit is actually 27 minutes at 440 normalized, which is pretty hard. You can see here, I'm pretty sure this is when he would have made the break. Um, like doing like 471 watts for four and a half minutes. You can see after that effort, it really slows down. And that's probably because they knew they got the break. So then it's kind of like just soft tap to the first climb, 300 normalized, so nothing too crazy. Um, and then we got the Tegenberg, uh, or just the Tegen, uh, well, I'm pretty sure it's Tegenberg, but anyway, 362 watts, not, again, nothing crazy. In between the climbs, you can see it's like, okay, it's not cruisy, um, but it's, pr it's pretty chill um, for these guys. Uh, then we start to hit the climbs, like 395, so starting to get a little bit harder, 370, nothing crazy. Um, in reality, they go up the Knotzeberg, um, again, 443 watts for three and a half minutes. So it's getting like more more spicy, but nothing uh, compared to what we see. Then the Corte uh 6.1, um, then this is really when it starts to go a bit on nuclear, 490 watts for five minutes. That's a very, very strong effort. Um, and you can see the peak five minute power um, did come on uh, on the Bergen 10 Hout, uh, which again, 6.3 was per kilo, very impressive. Um, also, like, obviously, the absolute power is the more important things on these climbs. Then it really starts to go up the Canary Berg, 572 watts. So now we're getting into some more tasty numbers. Uh, the Knopf Berg again, 500 watts to three minutes. So then it's really starting to bite. And um, in between the climbs, again, they're not going easy. Here again, 550 watts, um, which is pretty hard. Uh, this was really on the Bergen how like 672 watts for um, for a minute, but also for two minutes, 630 watts. So again, uh, sorry, that this was up, which climb was it? 
uh, the canary bug. So again, pretty hard, like eight watts per kilo. And in between these climbs, they're still riding decent, like 356 normalized. So again, it's it's just a hard day out uh, all round. Then we got one of the, basically the final, the, well, the final main climb with this Ladu's 550 watts yet again. Then it goes on to the, the finishing circuits um, with the uh, Nockerberg, um, not as hard, but you can still see 413 normalized for the last bit. Um, they finally get caught with like not very many kilometers to go. Um, it was, I believe they got caught around this part here on the cobbles. Um, and then after that, actually, it then kicks off again. He then gets in a break with Nielsen Paulus doing 480 watts for the last three minutes, 44. So it's just hard. His sprint, we can't really see it. I'm pretty sure his sprint was 760 watts for 30 seconds, but I'm not 100% sure because it also says it's here. So probably, basically, he, he pulls his Garmin too early, so Strava cuts off the last part, so he can't see it, which is kind of sad. Um, but nonetheless, still like a decent sprint, 830 watts for 11 seconds, but I assume he... If you look where his segment and this, this, the finish line would have been up there. So what can we conclude from this? He's a really strong boy. Um, this middle section here was very impressive. Again, just like 400 normalized. Um, and to, to be fair, the last hour and 40 being 430 normalized is very impressive. And I think it goes to show he's got punch. He's got a big diesel engine. You can see some of the numbers here. Again, super impressive. Um, and, you know, I expect him to do well in other classics. If he can have good positioning... Um, and everything else, then for sure he can go well in the classics. Uh, I think it's just, you know, having the good support around him, which to be fair with Jorgensen and Norsgaard, uh, they actually, uh, sorry, Jorgensen and even Garcia Cortina, who both got top five in E3. Um, I think actually Morris will have a really good classic squad uh, and it will be quite interesting to see how they do in the future. So anyway, just watching, hope you did enjoy this video. I'll see you in the next one.